caused by a great mad bird as it flapped its immense wings. We had been traveling for close to a month, and Am had allowed passages to open to us only sufficient to lead us up there, directly under the North Pole, where it had nightmared the creature for our torment. What whole cloth had he employed to create such a beast? Where had he gotten the concept from our minds? From his knowledge of everything that had ever been on this planet he now infested and ruled? From Norse mythology it had sprung this eagle, this carrion bird, this rock, this hergamer, the wind creature, huracan incarnate? Gigantic. The words immense, monstrous, grotesque, massive, swollen, overpowering, beyond description. There, on a mound, rising above us, the bird of winds heaved with its own irregular breathing, its snake neck arching up into the gloom beneath the North Pole, supporting a head as large as a Tudor mansion, a beak that opened slowly as the jaws of the most monstrous crocodile ever conceived, sensuously, ridges of tufted flesh puckered about two evil eyes, as cold as the view down into a glacial crevasse, ice blue and somehow moving liquidly. It heaved once more and lifted its great sweat-colored wings in a movement that was certainly a shrug, and then it settled and slept talons, fangs, nails, blades. It slept. Am appeared to us as a burning bush and said we could kill the hurricane bird if we wanted to eat. <laughs> we had not eaten in a very long time, but even so, Gorister merely shrugged. Then he began to shiver, and he drew up, and Ellen held him. Ted, I'm hungry, she said. I smiled at her. I was trying to be reassuring, but it was as phony as Nimdok's bravado. Give us weapons, he demanded. The burning bush vanished, and there were two crude sets of bows and arrows, and a, a water pistol lying on the cold deck plates. I picked up a set. Useless. Nimdok swallowed heavily. We turned and started the long way back. The hurricane bird had blown us about for a length of time we could not conceive. Most of that time we had been unconscious, but we had not eaten. A month on the march to the bird itself, without food. Now, how much longer to find our way to the ice caverns and the promised canned goods? None of us cared to think about it. We wouldn't die. We would be given filth scum to eat of one kind or another, or nothing at all, and would keep our bodies alive somehow, in pain, in, in agony. The birds slept back there for how long it didn't matter. When Ham was tired of its being there, it would vanish. But all that meat, all that tender meat.
my paper How can I see this coming down? In the end, in the end, we're not in any house, we're not in any house, Now, I wouldn't have made that if I'd just been thinking about it. Just pretending about it, it wouldn't be there. You can make believe it happens, or pretend that something's true. You can wish, or hope, or contemplate a thing you'd like to do. But until you start to do it, you will never see it through. Because the make-believe pretending just won't do it. For you, you've got to do it. Every little bit, you've got to do it. Do it, do it, do it. Then when you're through, you can know who did it. Cause you did it. You did it. You did it. That's right. And it feels good to do things no matter how anybody says it is. Feels good to have made something.